Outrocast. Trina, Tawanda, pleasure to be speaking with you both. Now, Tawanda, did I just yes. insult you by not saying Dr. Braxton? <laughs> no, it's all right. We're family around here. <laughs> yes. Uh, so speaking of family, uh, Braxton Family Values went a lot of seasons. This is the Braxtons. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like an entirely different show to you? Um, Only because, well, yes. Yes and no. Only because Tracy's not a part of it. So Braxton Family Values was all five of us. So the Braxtons is just the four of us with Tracy's legacy. That makes sense. Same answer yeah. to you, Trina? Uh, I can't disagree more. Um, that's it. Sorry. You that's can't disagree more. You can't but... disagree more. Are you disagreeing with me or are you agreeing with me? Did I say disagree? You said disagree, ma'am. Let me tell you something. That is not what I meant, Darren. I meant agree. I meant agree. I'm telling you, I'm going through menopause. I am perimenopausal and I get brain fog. So you have to excuse me. I, I thought that you were disagreeing because they do know that Trina has the best business acumen in the Braxton clan. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. But at this time, uh, menopause is kicking in in full fledge. It happens. We we all have our ups and downs. That's the bottom we line, do. though. But uh, Trina, re redemption right here. Okay. Highlight <laughs> for you in this season of the Braxtons, can you share a highlight personally for you? Uh, this season was very somber and cumbersome for me because uh, I'm the sister who's one of the most emotional ones in the family. And I suppressed my feelings because I kind of had loss after loss after loss you know, sure. with my ex-husband, my niece, then my sister. And it was just, I mean, just a, a barrage of feelings that I did not allow myself to feel because I put them under subjection. So when I finally allowed myself to talk um, vulnerably with the grief counselor, then I was able to express feelings that I never even knew I was feeling. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, Tawanda is you know can i keep the compliments going or we're maxed out for the day i mean you're amazing darren so go ahead <laughs> uh according to instagram the best chef in the family so yeah are we going to see more chef oriented stuff in the future seasons of the braxton's um not for me even though i can cook my butt off um mm -hmm. trina and vaughn has uh an amazing instagram and youtube uh cooking show um uh, that that they do every Monday night. Um, and I just like to eat their food at this point. Or my mom, she's having a, she has a new cooking show and I like to eat her food. So I would like for them to do the work and I just reap the benefits. Isn't that amazing? I, I would say so. Uh, I also like on Instagram, <laughs> the hope you heal thing that you just shared. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. I hope you heal because people go through some stuff. You yes. know what I mean? And I just, my thing, my theory is you just got to meet people where they are or leave them where they are. And if they can't vibrate up with you, they have to vibrate out. Well said. Well, I left you out of that question. Highlight for you in this season? Um, I think all of it. Um, I think there's, there's so many great moments. I think that having um, the never before seen photos and videos of Tracy is amazing. Um, the vulnerable moment of Tracy rubbing my head, knowing that I have alopecia was amazing for me. Um, um, just, just going through the journey of being there for our nephew, knowing that he lost his best friend and his mom. Um, we have happy moments, we have sad moments, but we're, we, we have family moments. And I think that's the thing that's important. Got it. So most families just having a successful reality show would be enough. And obviously the Braxton's music put the family on the map. Trina, in your case, bar chicks, basement, et cetera. Yes. Are there other businesses that we should be knowing about and or plugging? Um, so Trina and I have a skin and scalp care line. Yes. Um, so we just believe if your skin is beautiful, your scalp should be beautiful too. If you, if you have the shade look. Um, we have so many other things that's on the horizon. Um, again, I spoke about Trina's uh, cooking show on Instagram and YouTube. Me and my honey have a YouTube channel called King Ladybug, and we're also certified life coaches. I mean, I think the sky's the limit when, when it comes to our creativity in the Braxton's. And speaking, speaking on our creativity, Tawanda and I, we're both content creators. Tawanda's produced a few movies that are out there. I've created television shows and movies that are hopefully coming out soon. Um, but when you are creative, especially as singers and entertainers in such a, a, a vast 
period of time, you can't help but to allow that creative spirit to come out in other avenues and venues. Will the last question here, will we ever get a proper Braxton's album besides the one that came out in the mid nineties? <laughs> you know what? We don't know. We we're just, we're still kicking around that idea. Um, we just know that uh, if, if, if we did something, it wouldn't be the same without Tracy. We, right. we were fortunate enough to do a, a holiday CD yeah. album in 2015 with when it was all of us, all six of us did it, including our brother. Um, but right now it'd be a little, it's a little challenging. I think the wound is still really fresh for us without having Tracy and her voice being a part of it. But you just never know what might happen in the future. I hope that we get that. I hope another Alvin and the Chipmunks classic is also going to come <laughs> in the future. Fingers awesome. crossed, we can hope. But uh, You're awesome, Darren. Thank you for the entertainment. Thank you for the reality that you put out into the world. It's always great to see what the Braxtons can do on camera. So looking forward to everything to come, whether it's entrepreneurship, reality, music, whatever it is. Thank, Thank you, Darren. Darren. You were don't amazing. Don't hold it to my you. charge and I said disagree. <laughs> the key is the smartest business person, the doctor, <laughs> the chef, so many damn talents. Right. Exactly. Know. There we go. Thank you, Darren. You were amazing. Thank that was just an amazing interview. We appreciate love your energy. Your energy. Love Thank your energy. Likewise. No I love. Hey, thank you for taking the time. The last time I had the pleasure of speaking with you, the new movie was The Best Man. And I think that's like eight movies ago for you. Is that right? Maybe more. Yes, a long time ago. Oh, my goodness. Um, So much fun. Yes. Yeah. And then I look at IMDb and it looks like there's seven or eight more coming soon. So it sounds like you're not sleeping a lot these days. <laughs> I've just come off a job two days ago I, and it was night shoots. I am not sleeping. You are very accurate. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Well, you lose because you're not sleeping. We win because you have great new movies. Crescent City is the latest one. When did you actually film it? It was about a year ago, actually, in Arkansas, um, Little Rock. Uh, yeah, I think it was about a, roughly about a year ago. How many films have you done in Arkansas at this point? This was my first one and my first experience there, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. It was a city I'd never been to. Being part of a movie production, you always get the best treatment. You know, you get to go to the best restaurants and meet all the locals and stuff. And we and this was a great cast and crew and a bunch of super fun people and everyone's families flew in. You know, RJ, our director, he always brings his family. He's been a friend of mine for 17 years, you know, so he creates quite a lovely environment to be in um it feels like being on a big holiday with your friends and being creative and i know isai has been a mate of mine for years so there's just so many um uh lovely things about shooting in a small town with a bunch of great people you all are growing and learning together you know yeah a uh, word is the greatest art museum in the world is in arkansas and bentonville have you heard those rumors Nope, I did not know that. And I did not make it to those places, but good to know because I'm sure I'll go back. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you might be filming again in the near future. But anyway, uh, the role that you play in Crescent City, Jacqueline Waters, how much of you, the human being, is there in Jacqueline? Well, you know, I think with these kinds of characters, with all characters, in real life, we all have some kind of trauma, whether it's from childhood or experiences through life. No one's getting out, you know, smoothly. So, in Jacqueline's particular case, there's quite a lot of trauma, which leads her to make some poor decisions. I think she's got a good heart under it, but she's in survival mode. Um, and she doesn't know who to trust, where to turn. And when you're in pain, you just want to feel good. So she makes, without giving away our storyline, some decisions where she can kind of, you know, the, the lines are crossed and she can't, she's so messed up at that time in her life that she can't make a clear decision of work and personal life and they all meld into the other and it complicates it making it an interesting storyline for all of us and not knowing who do who's doing what and then you see the surprises along the way which hopefully you guys sort of see as the audience get to kind of experience and play who did it and what's happening and you know what I mean so an interesting story with lots of layers and Jacqueline's complicated you know sure uh great cast yourself included was your gateway into the project RJ the director 
it was him and I had done a project together 17 years ago, one of my first movies I ever did when I came to LA. And uh, he had always promised to work together again and it hadn't worked out, but the timing of this worked, the script was great. Jacqueline's an awesome character. I know a lot of women would have loved to have played her. Um, and obviously then you've got this really incredible cast of men um, surrounding this character. It's, it's really a no brainer. Um, people I really love and care about and incredibly talented actors to get to work opposite. So it's very easy, yes. <laughs> Well, speaking to your versatility, unless you're done with compliments for the day, is it oh, still okay? Oh, you can throw one in. <laughs> okay. The the first project, because I'm not from the great country of Australia, the first project I ever saw of yours was Hall Pass. Uh, saw that great comedy. Haven't seen it since, but I'm pretty sure it holds up whatever it was. But that's kind of the exact opposite of a role for you as Crescent City. So did you start out wanting to do drama, but it was comedy that was originally thrown towards you? I got thrown into comedy, but comedy was like always my personality in my 20s and 30s. I was so goofy. I still am, but as you grow older, more things happen to you. And so a lot of actors and a lot of times in my life, I've sort of, you go through things and you will get asked to do a project that's quite heavy and you're sort of like, oh, I get it why that's come to me at this time. It's like my frequency is drawing emotion in at the moment. And so it's always, you know, Hall Pass came around. It's such a, I was in Australia in the sun, in the, at the beach and everyone, agents are calling me, come on audition for Hall Pass. I'm like, oh, I'm having too much fun in Australia. You know, I was wild. And I fly in and this whole audition process and I'm up against all these. I mean, that process was so different to where I'm at now in my life. And so yeah. you just sort of roll with it as a human going through different years and getting older and things are presented to you. And yeah, now I get a lot more drama and a lot more thrillers and they challenge me. And But I can probably tap in a little better because I've lived a little longer. So um, everything I do seems to be so polar opposite to the next trust me I'm just just bizarrely shocked as you I'm always like all right here we go um but I I like that I like bouncing around to people don't think that that do know me don't think of me just as that or maybe they do because they've only seen me in hall pass say but you know when we do these interviews you can you've done a bit of research you'll see it's such a bizarre list of movies trust me I look at it and I go what am I what <laughs> I'm shocked too <laughs> Well, you kind of have the subdivides of a comedy, drama, thriller, Australian release, American release. And a common thread that I have with Australian actors and actresses who move to L.A. is oftentimes they didn't have any success in Australia. In other words, they they became pigeonholed as the Australian actor or actress in L.A. In your case, you did have a lot of success in that territory and here as well. So do you have different agents depending on the territory or genre? At the moment, I have the one American team who are so wonderful and managed to cover the globe for me. And I still have a lot of contacts in Australia and in Europe. So we reach out and branch out when the time is right. But it's, uh, you know, I was a TV presenter in Australia for the first couple of years of my career. Not what I wanted to do, but where I was at, um, Ben got asked to do Neighbours and then was asked to do a film in America and, and jumped over here. Ultimately, a lot of Australians will just be drawn to Hollywood because this is where well originally where everything was made and sort of where the energy, <laughs> not anymore, <laughs> not anymore. Um, but where it all sort of the energy happens and you know uh, America does our business so well they really do so does everywhere else around the world but this has got a real draw to it so you'll find most Aussies make their way over here <laughs> More so these days in Nashville. There's Nashville, Australia. But anyway, uh, the last question I have for you before I let you go has nothing to do with Crescent City or your next eight movies. It's what's the last concert that you went to? Oh, my goodness. Um, it's been a minute, to be honest with you. I haven't been to a concert in a while. Um, I, I did, went used to go to concerts all the time when I was younger. It might have been something at the Hollywood Bowl uh I couldn't even tell you the last one and I also will when I travel to Europe over Christmas and stuff I'll, you'll you will find me at a lot of those big dance parties with the huge DJs love that still um I started sort of love that vibe 
but I used to go to a lot of concerts. I remember seeing Pat Benatar and all the old school stuff. My first concert ever was Pearl Jam when I was 16 in Australia. Um, oh, I was at Stagecoach. There you go. I oh. went to Stagecoach, so I saw many performers and all of them were magnificent. And I'm not a huge country music person, but I now am after my Stagecoach experience. <laughs> Country, EDM, 80s, Pearl Jam, all over the place in a good way. But Nikki. Just like my Korea. <laughs> presenting, hall pass, this, whatever it is, I'm looking forward to seeing it in the near future. And thank you for your time, Nikki. Thanks so much, love. Thank you. Outro cast. Hi, I'm David Coverdale from Whitesnake. You're listening to the Gwyneth Paltrow cast featuring Darren, the sexy beast from wherever the hell he is. Outro cast. Good afternoon. How's your day going aside from doing press? My day is going fantastically well. It's exciting. It's sunny outside. I'm in Lisbon. The weather is amazing. So can't complain, man. So it's good evening to you if, if you're in Lisbon. Uh, not quite. It's still quite sunny outside. I think it's going to start getting dark around 8 p.m. or almost 9 p.m. in here. Wow. Lucky That's you. That's so nice. I'm glad to hear you're having a great day. Thank you for taking the time to talk. Duchess is the new movie. How did you wind up in Duchess? Because it seems like Charlotte and Neil keep the people around that they love. So I'm assuming that you knew them for a while. Not really. I'm a newcomer. Oh. I'm a total newcomer. I was I was found through a regular uh, casting process with self tapes and 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 you know and the like. And uh, apparently there was something about me that Neil liked. I asked him that I, after. Uh, and he told me there was something about me that was suitable for the character he was looking for. There was a toughness, but at a certain, but also there was a certain uh, sensitivity that he thought would be good for the character he played in connection with uh, with the Charlotte. Yes, right. So Billy is the character. Is there a lot of Billy? Billy is the character. Being? Baraka, Baraka, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there a lot of similar similarities between you and the character? Yes, always. Uh, I, so far, the characters I've been playing, there's always something about them that that is similar to to me. In this particular case, this this idea of mentorship, this idea of 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 protecting uh, someone close by, uh, the 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 fact that he sees uh, this is a, a Duchess a little bit as if she would be his daughter almost, you know? So he has this, so I, I, I have that. His background is similar to my background, you know, coming from Africa, coming from, from a place because he was a mercenary. So he's been to places where uh, there was war happening. So this is also my background. I come from a country that was at war for 40 years. My childhood and beginning of adult with, with, was always surrounded by a civil war environment. So, uh, there were definitely lots of lots of things that Baraka had that are similar to me. Got it. When I spoke with Charlotte last week, she mentioned that she had to do some boxing training related to this film. Did you have to do any special prep? Well, the usual. I, I'm I'm very physical, so I exercise uh, normally. I run. I do a few push-ups, uh, pull-ups, and things like that. Sure. Um, I I play basketball for for a long period of time. I enjoy doing my stunts when I, whenever I go into a project. So I always do my stunts when I go into a project. And I usually develop a very good relationship with the, the stunt team. And they love me because of that. I want to do everything. So uh, we go through the work that needs to, 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 to be gone through in order to make those uh, stunts realistic. Because I usually can tell when an actor is doing the actual thing and there's a double who's doing it. You know, and I don't right. want my audience to see that. I want them to see it and see that it's me doing that thing. So we had training for that, of course, because you don't just jump over there because it's dangerous. Um, and that's how we achieve things. So you train for that. You go to the gym, you pump iron and, uh, you know, you do jumps and, and all sorts of things. And uh, you go through the, uh, the, uh, the choreographies with the stunt coordinators and you make it happen. Well, when you say that you do everything, you also produce and direct outside of your acting. Did you plan all along that you were going to have this multifaceted career where you just weren't going to only be the on-camera person? No, I think life life is developing uh, for me in a very uh, 
let's see what happens next way. Mm -hmm. So I, I never thought I was going to be an actor. I started acting when I was 28. Before that, I was doing something entirely different. I was in a kind of a administrative, political kind of environment. I was studying public administration and law. Mm -hmm. I started acting when I was 28. That's late for a lot of people. And I never knew I wanted to be an actor. So uh, one thing goes, pulls another thing, and suddenly I'm directing and I'm producing, and I still don't know the end of the journey. Mm. But the common thread in all this is the storytelling. And you can do storytelling whether through acting or through directing or through writing or through producing. It's all part of the process, yeah? So it's been fun. It's been this. It's not programmed. It's just happening. So I, I'm just following the thread, you know? Yeah, when I was a kid, movies pretty much were made in New York and Los Angeles, and that was it. And these days... There's a lot of movies made in Georgia, North Carolina. Uh, they say it's New York, but it's really London or it's Vienna, et cetera. Are you traveling a lot more these days because of acting? I always did. My very first film, very first film, international film, was a film entitled, entitled Viva Riva that was shot in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. And ever since then, I work in different places. I worked in North America. I worked in South America. I worked in Europe, in different countries. Uh, I worked in Africa, of course. Uh, and I worked in different languages because I speak different languages. Yes. So uh, I, I speak Spanish, French, English. Uh, I had played role, Portuguese. I had played roles where I had to speak Hungarian, which is a very difficult language, yes. and Czech and Slovak. So. Uh, this is one of the aspects of, of, of the work that I do enjoy. The fact that I can work in many different locations, many different geographies. You get to interact with different cultures as well. And, and that's really fascinating. So I was never just uh, on one particular spot, on one particular country or one particular continent. I'm always bouncing around. So what I'm hearing in talking with you is that you're willing to do all sorts of jobs, not just be on camera. You're willing to speak other languages. You're willing to stay in shape. You might be one of the easiest actors there is to work with these days. Well, that would have you would have to ask that to my directors and uh, and the people that work with me. But I, I I'm kind of inclined to agree with you. Is that because though you started at such a later age? In other words, you did real people jobs before you yeah. transitioned into acting. So in other words, that you approach the profession with a lack of ego, with a lack of realistically going, this is easier than digging graves. No, I do have a big ego. Man, I'm aware of that. Yeah, I have a huge ego. I think I'm a king. Look at me. So, but that's not the thing. I think uh, life has humbled me. I have I have a, a history in my life that is very traumatic. Oh, sure. I had to deal with with very uh, things that people only deal with in adult age from early age. So it felt always felt like the 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 mat was being pulled off my feet, sure. and I had to find the balance to stay up. And and in all this, you 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 learn that you know you're really not the most important thing in the universe, you know. Uh, and, 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 and when it comes to people, you never know who you're talking to. That person may, may be somebody today. You never know what they're going to be tomorrow. What if you're going to need that person or not? Mm -hmm. So what I'm learning is really okay. Uh, and I think this is also one of the essences of, of, of the work that we do, because we are trying to be human, right? We are trying to portray human beings. Okay, when we are, not, we are not doing one CGI thing with uh, like Avatar and stuff like that, right. <laughs> which they're also trying to portray things with char human characteristics, yeah? yeah. And, 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 and if you're trying to do that, you have to be able to reach out and to, 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 to grasp every person and to try to understand every person. This is one of the things that is fulfilling me the most about this job. It's really being able to put myself in another human skin. And it helps not just on camera when we're doing this fictional uh, works, but also in reality, when we're interacting with real people who think in a different way than we think, who feel differently than we feel. So uh, I think this is what uh, what's making me uh, more and more humble, you know. Uh, and also, it's a very 
it's a very flexible kind of work. Uh, you never know who you're going to be working with and what their criteria, what their method is. Every director works in a different way. You know, I, I yeah. worked recently with a director that he, you had the screen, uh, you had the script and, and you think you're going to do what's in the script. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the set, he changes things around and yeah. you have to be able to adjust. <laughs> so... <laughs> Every director is going to be different, of course. Yeah. As you said, well, I have two quick questions for you, Hoji, and then I'll let you go. And the, the first one is Duchess to us is a new movie. When I spoke to Charlotte, I think she said the script started getting written in 2020 or 2021. So it was an older long-term project. Are we allowed to know where we're going to see you next, which film or TV show? Well, you might be seeing me in two uh, projects. One that is going to come out uh, for Disney Plus in January mm. uh, that was shot in Brazil. Uh, we shot it in, 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 in January and February, and it was supposed to come out in November this year. They be, they're very fast these days, man. But it's going to come out in January. It's called MMA, Meu Melhor Amigo, that's Portuguese, My Best Friend. And this is, is, a, is a story that, that delves around uh, uh, mixed martial arts mm -hmm. and autism. And wow. uh, it's, it's a drama with lots of action, lots of fighting. You know, some of the people that are engaged in real life in the MM, MMA movement are part of the film. You know, we have this celebrity uh, referee in it, uh, uh, Mario Yamazaki, for instance. Uh, and it was a very exciting project. I had to learn how to, to, to fight, you know, to... Because you know, to learn how mix. Because my, my character is a is is a, is a coach again, another mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a mentor to Duchess in this movie, and I'm a mentor to the to the protagonist of that other movie. So I guess I'm gearing towards the mentorship kind of characters. You know, Fantastic. I may be Morpheus one of these days. Who knows? That would I be like cool. MMA, so I'm excited about that project and seeing you in that. And the last question has nothing to do with Duchess. It's what's the last concert? that you went to the last concert that i went to the last concert that i went to happened by accident to tell you the truth sure and it happened in zagreb croatia it happened by accident and for that reason i forgot the name of the band that was <laughs> played because i have a friend who's a musician and he invited me to go to this satire uh, award ceremony and uh, that was happening in Zagreb, Zagreb, Croatia. So I went and at the end of the, the, the satire ceremony, he told me that before, uh, a popular Croatian band was performing. It was a rock band. It was a rock concert. That's the last concert I've been to. Wow. So Croatia, Brazil, Congo, you never know. Portugal, <laughs> France. I'm everywhere, man. You're I'm everywhere. I'm like God. I'm everywhere. And you're a king. We have learned that as well. Well, thank you for your time. Congrats, you, Duchess. And looking forward to that MMA project as well in the near future. Thank you. Have a great day. Outro.